Good morning. Basa na tayo nating book, History of the Filipino People by Agoncilia N. Guerrero. Nandito pa rin tayo sa ating part 2. Wait lang ha. Spanish period. Tapos, topic 5 pa rin ba tayo? Integration into the Spanish Empire, paragraph, developments in Spain and Europe. Sundan nyo ako sa inyong libro guys. November 22, 2020 tayo ngayon. Start na. Basa. Developments in Spain and Europe impact on the Philippines. When the Philippines was formally integrated into the Spanish Empire with the establishment of the colony's capital in Manila in 1571, History of the Filipino People to Gaisa by Agoncilia and Guerrero. Olet. Developments in Spain and Europe impact on the Philippines. When the Philippines was formally integrated into the Spanish Empire with the establishment of the colony's capital in Manila in 1571, it was inevitable that developments in Spain and the rest of Western Europe should cast their shadow on the Philippines. Despite the fact that the Philippines was the only Spanish colony that had never had any direct contact with the mother country, Spain, Moreover, so to transplant in the Philippines as she did in Mexico and Peru, those institutions that had more or less developed and matured in the Iberian Peninsula. This attempt at complete assimilation explains why in the eyes of the Spanish crown, the vice royalties of Mexico and Peru and the Philippine dependency were at once and at the same time New Spain's Spanish institutions modified by experimentation in the administration of the Latin American colonies were introduced in the Philippines and modified further still by the existing institutions in the colony. The face of imperial Spain, the political, economic, and socio-religious conditions obtaining in the Iberian Peninsula were reflected in developments in the Philippines. The, the doctrines of Machaya, Villianism, and Mercantilism were popular in Europe during the 16th century and for the most part of the 17th. And in Spain, Absolutism reigned perhaps much more so than in Florence and gave birth to Absolutism. Drawing from the teaching of Machiavelli in his book, The Prince, even the administrators of the overseas empire were granted vast and extensive powers. In the Philippines, the governor-general was virtually the king, and even the countervailing devices that is being hopefully instituted to prevent these ex excesses were useless. Mercantilism, on the other hand, was for a long time the basis of Spanish economic policy. The implementation of the doctrine resulted in the sequestration or isolation of the colony, for it resulted in the sequestration. Ah, all it, guys. The implementation of the doctrine resulted in the sequestration or isolation of the colony for its raw material should flow, flow only into the mother country and the Finnish manufacturers of Spain or whatever Spain wanted to bring to the col colony should not find any competition. The desire for more colonies, no doubt en engendered by the adheren adherence the theory of mercantilism on the part of other powers resulted in the frequent attempts of the British, the Dutch, and the Portuguese to secure the, the foothold in the Philippines. 
Heavy taxes were imposed on the people in order to defend the colony's coastal areas from such depredations. These are, of course, not only the detrimental effects of, merc or of mercantilism in the Philippines. The two doctrines held sway in Spain and her colonies even when the rest of Europe had already discarded them in favor of a more democratic political system and the laissez fair doctrine in commerce. Political instability in Spain would also have its effects on the Philippines. The consolidation of the Spanish nation state was nominally achieved with the reconquista of the Iberian Peninsula from the Muslims in 1492. Yet for the most part, the monarchy holds the monarchies hold over the many provinces remain superficial in the 17th century the crown concerned itself with the delicate and arduous task of reducing the debilitating divisiveness among the provinces but even before the spanish crown could fully extend its sovereignty over the rebellious catalan and the northern provinces spain became involved in european wars spain involvement in these wars contributed to a rapid decline in its power and prestige one of these, the Seven Years' War, affected the grabbing wars guys of seven years. One of these, the Seven Years' War, affected the Philippines directly. As a result of a family compact or Pacto de Familia, 1761, a reluctant Spain joined France in the latter struggle for colonial and maritime supremacy against England. The British acted sharply to this participation by sending an expedition from Madras, India, to invade the Philippines. The English routed the Spaniards easily and occupied Manila for about two years, 1762 to 1764. The British occupation of Manila encouraged Filipino resistance against the Spaniards for the defeat of the latter and their miserably retreat from the city and the strenuous efforts to preserve Spanish sovereignty in the provinces lowered the stature of the Spaniards in the eyes of the natives and destroyed to a very large extent the facade of in in invincibility that the Spaniards had built around themselves for nearly two centuries. Di ba nga sinakot tayo, ano, napakatagal nito? 400 years yata tayong sinakop ng Spaniards. Ito, tika. For nearly two centuries, Filipino resistance against Spanish rule had, of course, begun almost immediately after Spain established her sovereignty over the Philippines. The political and economic conditions in the Philippines were such that Spain could contain anti-Spanish reaction intermittent revolts, plug Spain no end. In the early decades of the 19th century, Spain could no longer stem the tide of growing nationalism in the colonies. In 1810, Spanish authority was overthrown in Buenos Aires signaling the wars of independence that by 1826 had triumphed everywhere in Latin American colonies. Towards the end of the same century, the Philippines would wage its own separate, separatist revolt from Spain. Development in the 19th century In the 19th century, Spain herself waged a war of independence against France, the French occupation of Spain in 1808, which was part of Napoleon's campaign to gain and disputed control of Western Europe, caused widespread resistance and the reorganization of revolutionary juntas all over Spain to unite the people against the French invaders. The juntas later resigned their powers to a Supreme Council of Regency which established itself as a government and assumed direction of the war. The Council convoked in 1810 <laughs> guys. The Council convoked on in 1810 to 1813 the Cortes with more 
the first time included representatives who were Spanish nationals to be shared from the overseas colonies, including the Philippines. Spain granted representation to the colonies in order to secure the support and cooperation of the colonies in the war against the prince and at the same time obviate the possibility of widespread rebellion in the colonies that might be encouraged by the collapse of the monarchy in the Spanish peninsula. Neither of these overlords' expectations, however, was realized. On three separate occasions, 1810, 1813, 1823, and 1834 to 1837, Spain granted representation to the Philippines through. Spain granted representation to the Philippines through. It was at best a representation in name only for the delegates to the Cortes were not Filipino. Oh, sorry, na hologin bolpin. Okay, all it. Though it was the best, though it was at best a representation in name only for the delegates to this Cortes were not Filipinos but full-blooded Spaniards who might be expected to advance only their own interests. In the first half of the 1890s, when the propaganda movement was in full swing, the reformist of the propagandists who wanted reforms in the Philippines without separating from Spain would demand Philippine representation in the Spanish Cortes. The Prince invasion of Spain had resulted in the weakening in the weakening of the monarchy and the inevitable cease to struggle for political supremacy between the conservatives or traditional traditionalists on one hand and the liberals or progressives on the other. The two factions attempted to solve the problem by concluding a pacto del pardo and agreement to alternate at decent intervals in controlling the government. The frequent, changes, the frequent changes in the ministry in Spain also led to frequent changes among governors general in the Philippines, whose short tenure scarcely gave even the well intention among them the opportunity to familiarize themselves with conditions in the colony. The opening of the Suez Canal in 1869, which reduced considerably the travel distance between the Philippines and Europe, facilitated the infiltration of the Philippines by those very ideas that caused political upheavals, upheavals in Europe. Along with good and industry came liberals and liberal ideas. Ideas of revolutionary chains of the Prince Revolution, secularism, and clericalism and nationalism found a fertile seedbed in the colony in conditions no less intolerable than in France and other Europe countries which gave birth to these ideas. Political Changes Central Government For more than 250 years, Spain administer, administered the Philippines through the Council of the Indies Consejo, the Angels, every powerful body vested with all governmental powers, legislative, executive, and judicial this council transmitted to the government to the governor general the royal decrees that guided every governor general's administration to the Philippine colony. This royal general's administration of the Philippine oh wait. This council transmitted to the governor general the royal decrees that guided every governor general general's administration of the Philippine colony. This royal order orders and edicts the recopilation commonly called the laws of the Indies. The medieval, the medieval Spanish legal code La Siete Partidas as well as Spate of Sumptory and other laws applicable to other Spanish colony but were irrelevant to conditions in the Philippines were the legal basis of Spain colonial policy in the Philippines. As in Mexico and Peru, the human laws of the Indies which aimed at reducing the cruelty and rapacity of the colony colonial officials did little to improve the lot of the conquered Filipinos. In 1863, taposin lang natin to guys. In 1863, the overseas ministry minister Yudi Ultramar took over the functions of the Council of the Indies and the Peninsular Laws enacted in the in the 19th century were extended to the, to the Philippines. 
the integration of the pulpins with the Spanish in part necessitated the establishment of a strong paternalistic and wait lang the integration of the Philippines with the Spanish Empire necessitated the establishment of a strong paternalistic and highly centralized government headed by a governor general appointed by the Viceroy, Viceroy of Mexico and later by the Spanish King, the governor general. Na grumble na yung basa ko guys. The governor general was the sole representative of the Spanish King of the governor. Okay, by the Viceroy of Mexico and later by the Spanish King, the Governor General was the sole representative of the Spanish Crown and the Colony. As Captain General Vice Royal, Spanish as Captain General Vice Royal, patron and president of the Royal Audiencia, he wielded vast military ex ecclesiastical and legislative legislative powers. Ano ba yan? Ba't mali mali na nabasa ko? The governor's overwhelming authority and indicated by his unrestricted use of the complaints or the power of to, suspe to suspend the implementation of any royal order if, in his opinion, the conditions in the colony did not warrant its implementation. Kaya pala eh. Bilis na. Taposin ko lang kasi to. The government's overwhelming authority. Okay. As Captain General, Vice Royal Patron, and President of the Royal Audiencia, his welded vast military, ecclesiastical, and legislative powers. The government's overwhelming authority is indicated by his unrestricted use of the complacency or the power to suspend the implementation of any royal order if. In his opinion, the condition in the colony did not warrant its implementation. The use of the formula of this copero no complo, I obey but I do not execute, rested on the assumption that the great distance between the colony and its finished circums circumscribed. The kings and his ministers' capacity to take into consideration and conditions conditions obtaining in the colony in the enactment of any colonial legislation. Pasensya na guys, nagmamadali na. Consequently, even the human colonia colonial laws, especially those that threatened to erode the powers of the governor, were not implemented. Indeed, in the hands of the governor, the complacency was frequently used to enhance the selfish interests of the government and his subordinates, possessing kingly powers and far removed from supervision by the peninsular government, the governor became the fountain head of graft and corruption in the province. The office of the governor was oftentimes purchased or bestowed in a favor, mercy, and generally involved a short tenure of office averaging two years and ten months, and in the 19th century, even shorter. shorter. As a result, the governor general excelled in the most in the almost frantic operation of amassing a good fortune before his term of office expired. The all too consuming is speculatory participation in the galleon trade and the crippling and unjust taxation of the people to augment their official salaries were therefore the typical characteristics of the administration of most governors general for a few exception ex for a few exceptionally well intentioned Governors, the short term of office was hardly a favorable a stimulus to good government. So, bukas na itong countervailing institutions. Bye everyone. God bless.